Good morning. Good morning again. And thank you to so many of you who do so much behind the scenes, week in and week out, to make worship so meaningful and beautiful. And I also would like to again thank Kathy Reed in advance and all the volunteers who are preparing us for the engagement fair this morning. Please pray with me. O oh, ever present and ever near God, we acknowledge your active and felt presence among us in this moment. Open our hearts and our minds that we would receive your word for us this day. And oh dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. Amen. Amen. Ephatha. Ephatha. In our gospel reading from Mark this morning, Jesus places his fingers into the ears of a deaf man and looked up to heaven and sighed and said, Ephatha. And immediately, the man's hearing was restored. Ephatha. Ephatha. Ephatha is an especially challenging word, both to pronounce and to spell. And it is a word that appears in the Bible only once. Here in Mark's Gospel, which, as you may recall, is the earliest account of the Gospel news. Ephatha is the Greek form of the Aramaic word that Jesus used in this miracle story, in which he healed a man who had been deaf and mute. And so Ephatha literally means be open. Be opened. And in the story then, it was the man's ears that had been opened again. Ephatha. Now, as you may have noticed, our gospel reading from Mark for today actually includes two healing stories. The story of the man who had been deaf as well as the familiar story of the Syrophoenician woman who had approached Jesus on behalf of her daughter who was suffering. And so this woman, who was also considered a foreigner, was desperate. And she begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. And while we as followers of Jesus today want to believe that Jesus, of course, would have healed this distraught woman's daughter, he doesn't, at least not right away. Rather, Jesus said, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. What? What was that? What did Jesus just say? Did Jesus just disrespect and dismiss and refer to this de desperate mother as a dog? Well, yes. It certainly appears that way according to what is written. This story reminds us that Jesus was as fully human as he was divine. Now, backing up a bit in this narrative, at the beginning of this story in Mark chapter 7, we are told that Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre, where he entered a house and did not want anyone to know where he was. 
And so it seems as though we are catching a glimpse of Jesus' fully human side in this moment when he comes across as impatient and dismissive and even cranky. And at the same time, we can only imagine how desperately Jesus was wanting to finally be left alone. He was probably exhausted from all of the preaching and teaching and the overwhelming needs of the crowds and all of the walking and hiking and sleeping outdoors. And no doubt, he was still grieving and bereft by the recent and tragic and gruesome death of his beloved cousin and friend and faithful follower and partner in ministry, John the Baptist. And nevertheless, this foreigner, this outsider, this Syrophoenician woman found Jesus, and she persisted. She did not take no for an answer. And she stood up, and she spoke up, and she begged Jesus for what she needed, which took a lot of courage on her part. Given that Jesus, as a man, had a lot more power than she did as a woman in that society at that time. And so, how did Jesus respond? To her plea? Well, Jesus acknowledged her and listened to her and heard her deepest need and understood what this desperate and devoted mother was pleading for. And in response, Jesus did indeed heal her daughter. In my recent reflections on this familiar story, as I was wrestling with this story once again, I came to understand that this highly charged moment with a Syrophoenician woman was, if you will, an ephatha moment for Jesus as this strong and persistent and courageous and resilient woman advocated for what she needed. And Jesus was opened and was then able to hear and understand and appreciate and recognize her deepest need. And in response, Jesus then healed her daughter. Ephatha, Ephatha, be open. Our gospel reading for today teaches us that God comes to us in different ways and often unexpected ways and inspires us to be open. And so, I ask you, where and when in your personal life and in, our pers- and in our life together, are we being called to open ourselves up to new ways of seeing and new ways of being and new ways of living in community together as followers of Jesus Christ? As many of you, maybe all of you know by now, our first ever First Church Engagement Fair takes place downstairs today in Parish Hall after this worship service. And it truly is an opportunity for you to discover the numerous ways to become involved and stay connected and share your time and talents and volunteer to serve on a commission or a committee or work 
on a special project or teach our children and youth or get involved in our music ministry or host a small group gathering or serve a hot meal to those who are hungry or work in our gardens on the church property or serve in the church office or maybe even start a new ministry. The list of opportunities and possibilities goes on and on and on. Our engagement fair today is truly an opportunity for you and for all of us together to be open. As all of you well know by now, here at First Church, we are also experiencing an opening of another kind as we prepare for Reverend Tim's retirement next month. Later, in October, we will celebrate Reverend Tim's nearly 25 years of spirited and impactful ministry within our congregation and throughout our wider community. And so, in these days and weeks ahead, leading up to Reverend Tim's last Sunday as our senior pastor on October 20th, these days are a deeply meaningful and profound time in the life of our congregation because it is a time for all of us to be opened and to share our thoughts and feelings with Tim and with one another as we navigate these significant times of change and transition and loss together. No matter how difficult and painful it may be to say goodbye or see you later, it is the work that we are called to do in our covenant with Reverend Tim and with one another and with the wider church. This particular chapter of First Church Ministry is indeed a time to be opened together. Ephatha, Ephatha, be opened. Thanks be to God. Amen.